Hi, this is Dennis Peathers. Welcome uh, to Joining Jesus, a production of The Rooftop TV, where I get the opportunity to meet people all over the world as I travel and just speak to them about how are they joining Jesus in his mission. I get everywhere, but today I'm actually very close to home. I'm in England and I'm meeting a good friend of mine, David Gilby from Chelmsford, England. So, David, how are you? Good morning, Dennis. Yes, I'm great. So uh, good to see you. You too, my brother. So just tell me a little bit about you. Who are you? And tell me a little bit about your life. Okay, well, yes, I'm David. I uh, am got a wife and three children who are all grown up. I've got one one little grandson of two, who's, who's, a, who's, a, who's a great little chap. Um, I spent 30 years of my life as a, a, a police officer in the county where I live, Essex. Uh, left that uh, all nearly 10 years ago now. Um, had a job for a couple of years um, with a, a local housing association. And uh, since then, uh, God has taken me on a, a very interesting journey of, of being involved in prayer in uh, the city in which I live, Chelmsford, uh, and also a number of other um, opportunities to get involved in, in the supernatural, if just you before, like. Before Here we in. get there, just tell me, you, so you live in Chelmsford in England. Just, just give, us a, give us a glimpse. What is Chelmsford like? I mean, is it full of Christians? Is it full of people that have no idea about God? Just, just give us a... A 30 second feel of what it's like in Chelmsford as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. Yeah, well, the Chelmsford um, it, it comes from a Roman settlement. It grew up into a large market town in 2012. The, the Queen granted its city status in, in Great Britain. Um, it's got lots of a whole variety of different churches, expressions of, of Christianity. I've been involved in um, the Elam Pentecostal Church for the last 40 years. Um, but it's yes, it's got quite a, a, a dynamic as far as the Christian um, community goes, um, and you know we just want to see more and more um, unity, if you like, between the churches. There's there is a um, good relationship though uh, between uh, between most. Okay, great. So so the picture I'm getting is Chelmsford is like a Christian city already. Is that right? I mean, is all this dynamic power? Is everybody in Chelmsford a Christian or? Are there a few people that still need to discover Jesus? Well, that's that's uh, that's a good one. I think, although the, there's a lot of good dynamic churches, and of course we're we're living in a, in a world which is still in the COVID um, outbreak, and churches haven't even been able to meet. And I, and I do speculate as to what churches will actually look like when people go back mm. to their buildings. How many will be left? And the population of Chelmsford over the years I've been here has grown and grown and grown. Probably about one hundred and sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. residents and growing and then churches probably haven't actually grown bit, you know to, to keep up with that mm. so there's something not quite right there and um so what when you say the church just just to give us a feel because some people might not have any idea about chelmsford at all so 160,000 people living in chelmsford roughly i'm not going to hold you to this but roughly how many people would you say the churches are impacting how many people are in the churches or being reached by the ministries of the churches would you say yeah that's that's quite a difficult question to answer but certainly um as i say pre pre-covid you could have expected i i would guess um not around the whole area of Chelmsford, which is quite a broad um, geographical and, and rural area, perhaps, I don't know, three, four thousand people wow. who would be church, you know, at least nominal churchgoers, uh, mm. uh, as well as, um, you know, committed Christians. Wow. So out of 160,000, you're saying 4,000. So the maths mean that it's not really very many people at all. 156,000 people completely unreached, which for some people who watch this, you know, in different parts of the world, might be a bit of a surprise because some people they they always think of England as you know as as Christian England they think back to the days when England sent missionaries all around the world and they they kind of think wow you know to go to England all those churches and cathedrals and everything else but the picture you're painting is one which is a bit different yeah there are churches and they are doing interesting and dynamic things but but the vast majority of people are outside of that okay we'll come back to that in a moment just sure. just just briefly just uh, give us an idea of how you came to faith. You said that you've been a Christian quite a long time and you've been in a Pentecostal church. I'll come back to that in a little while for 40 years or so. But how did it all start with you? How did you come to know Jesus? Yes, well, I, I grew up in, in what we would call a Christian home. My parents were both um, believers. 
and in fact I, I went to the church that I'm currently part of um, right from birth um, although we, we moved around uh, a couple of times to, to a different church um, but that was during my my childhood and teenage years and I heard all about this this God this Jesus and by the time I got to about 18 it didn't actually mean quite so much to me as, as may, maybe my, mm. my parents and, and others had, had sort of uh, had spoken about and I started to to really wonder whether actually I started to question was there a God and uh, it was you at that point at this time were you I was 18 yes okay. so I was a sort of independent young yeah. man I was working in a bank at the time mm -hmm. um, perhaps sampling what the world uh, had to offer yeah, sure. and yeah. uh, yet God had his, his hand on me uh, all, all through this and, and actually brought our family back to we, we were going to a uh, a particular church in the city at the time or the town at the time hmm. and we, we moved um, a, a man gave a, a, a story of how he was healed and this this match quite ironic really this man had lost all his hair and as you can see I don't have a lot of hair uh, at this this time and uh, he had had a, had a disease and um, the hair had grown back and he invited a hundred people to come and hear the story of how his his hair had grown back and our family was, was part of that hundred people and we went into this okay. this church, the, the Elam Church, and um, I, don't, I don't think God grabbed me in in, in the sense of you know um, some sort of spiritual experience at that mm. time. But I just mm. felt actually this would be a church I could I could perhaps move to as well as our, our family sort of move back there. Mm. And I sat probably for a few weeks just just absorbing. Um, these gospel messages, these messages about Jesus uh, is a typical thing in, in, in the, the, the church that I've been part of to, to, to have a, a message that, that says about the good news of Jesus. And I remember one morning something just grabbed me and it was the Holy Spirit. And he mm. just sort of warmed my heart. Uh, mm. I think it's Wesley who says my heart was strangely warmed. And I yeah. think that's what happened this particular morning. I think it was April in 1980. And I, I just felt at that point that uh, I'd received, um, you know, what, what the Bible talks about being born again, that something had let, happened. Let, let me ask you a question about that, David, because I, mm. I meet a lot of Christians, you know, as I travel, who or certainly a lot of people in church. And I think they would, you know, they would say they're Christians. And I meet a lot of people who are in church who are not sure if they're Christians. There's even yeah. people outside of church who would say, you know, they, they would love to know God if but they've never had that experience that, you know, strangely warmed as you, as you call it experience. I mean, what is it, what is it, if I can, I don't know if you can ask this or not, but what does it feel like that, that, you know, you talk about strangely warmed. I mean, it's an intriguing little phrase, but what, what did you actually feel when, when, when that happened? What, what happened? You know, was you thinking differently? Did you feel, what, 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 what was it like for you to say that your heart was strangely warmed? Well, I, I, all, I, all I remember of the experience, I was sitting in this this morning service. I can even picture where I was sitting, and yeah. I, the preacher was talking about, you know, have, have you, you, you know, you made a commitment to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, something like that. Mm, yeah. And uh, I, I just remember being there was a there was a real challenge came on my in, on my heart in, in my life. You know, it was more than just a, a mental thing. You know, yeah, I assent to this doctrine, this, that, the other. It was actually just a feeling. Yeah, this is this is the time I've got to do something. I'm being challenged, mm. and and I remember afterwards, certainly, I was involved with the, the the youth group at that time, just feeling like I was not quite walking on air, as in sort of some ethereal thing. But I mm. felt really light and and just so happy, and there was definitely some change that, that had taken place in 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 that uh, that day. Which has sort of carried on um, mm. over the forty years since. Okay, now that's really interesting because you know I, I know so often people, in a sense, they they want to have an experience of God, um, and you, you've had an experience of God, and as you say, it's kind of it actually impacted your your heart, the way you felt, your emotions, and and yet it's quite hard to to describe it and say it's exactly like this. I just I want people just to get a chance to hear that because. Uh, you know, I, I personally, like you, I believe that God does intervene in people's lives in ways that are quite mysterious sometimes and supernatural. I mean, you can't just say, you know, logically and rationally, this is exactly what it was. It was God doing stuff. So it's really, really great to to hear that. So that was quite a long time ago now, um, I guess. And 
you've been a Christian quite a long time since. The question I'd like to ask you, because this is the whole theme of these programs we're doing is, is how are people joining Jesus in his mission around the world? And so you became a Christian. Um, and since then, I guess, in different ways, you've been trying to, to live for Jesus. Just, just give us a glimpse again into not maybe not the last 40 or so years, but in the like now, what, what does joining Jesus in his mission mean for you as you seek to make Jesus known in your life today? Yeah, I suppose I, I just, just going, not, not going back over the 40 years, but just since then, I've just had this desire to, um, in a sense, tell other people about the faith that I received. Mm. And it hasn't necessarily been in a formal way of, of, of sort of standing on street corners and, and trying to preach or, or yeah. actually standing in a, in a pulpit and, and speaking. But for instance, when I was in the police uh, service uh, here, here in England, um, I joined the Christian Police Association, which is uh, a group of, of, of police officers and, and civilian staff who, who've mm. had that sort of same experience of, of finding Jesus. And I became actually the branch leader and we, we would work amongst the um, other, other uh, our colleagues uh, and, and out into the the churches uh, and, and really just just you know present not just in words but in, in actions as well mm -hmm. um our, our faith and um we just set, see, we seek to be an influence so i've always had that uh, even in my police days that that idea about wanting to um you know be a witness for him mm -hmm. and and to encourage others to, to stand up for their faith as well because particularly in in police service and in society generally people yeah. Yeah. keep their faith very privately and particularly mm. in our country I, th mm. I think particularly people have become very scared almost to to express their faith so I've always wanted to express my faith so since I, I left the police I, I've um, always been involved in um, you know th things not not just in my own church but actually out into the the, the churches of the city I've been involved in um, for instance healing ministry Christian healing ministry mm um praise and worship uh meetings um out on the street we, we've done uh, i've done some work with, with with healing um in in recent years I've, I've been involved in um bringing churches together in the city with, with a thing called champs for 24 7 prayer mm -hmm. uh and more recently i became the chair of christians together in chelmsford all, all with this aim mm -hmm. of um encouraging people to if it work together to, yeah. to be, be a witness, um, but, but say not necessarily in that traditional way of, of just sort of standing up and, and, and preaching at people. Mm. Um, my my heart is to get alongside people. Let me ask you a couple of questions about that, because I think you're saying some really interesting things, um, which I want to cover. What, one, one of them is um, you're, you're talking about churches doing things together. Um, and you, meant, you mentioned that you know, you're, you're in a Pentecostal church. Uh, uh, and I, I find, as I speak to lots of different Christians, that sometimes we, these labels that we tend to put on churches, you know, they, they can, they can actually sometimes lead to quite a lot of division and, and people even like caricature, you know, so that you talk about a Pentecostal church. And sometimes people, I personally think unhelpfully and wrongly, but but sometimes people immediately say Pentecostal church, you know, they what they imagine is a bunch of people who are all kind of over the top dancing around and no, no, almost no sense of reality, just like they get lost in all this. And they, they expect God to keep doing all these miracles all the time. But do they really happen? You get all that sort of thing going on. And then you get other churches that are almost not Pentecostal. You know, they stand against that. And But what I love about what you're saying is you're joining Jesus mission um, is that even though you desperately it seems to me believe in a god who can do miraculous things uh, the holy spirit has the power to, to actually intervene you're working with other churches as well you're not kind of closing these other churches down and saying go away we, you know we don't want to work with you you're actually saying the church is bigger than me than just my experience so just just talk me through that a little bit how do you how do you get churches that maybe don't all have the same understanding of god the holy spirit how do you get them actually even in the same room talking to each other about being on mission with jesus how do you get that to happen <laughs> yeah that's a good question um I, I think over the years um you know all, all, all church denominations and streams have started off you know because good men and women have desired to 
um, follow the, the Bible more, more closely, the teachings of Jesus more closely, and, and bring a, a, a fresh and a, and a new dynamic to, to, to faith. But often, um, you know, across uh, different streams, denominations, uh, traditions, um, they've just become religious. And, and, mm -hmm. and even in the Pentecostal church, I, I think, in the charismatic movement, we sort of moved into these expected um, sort of norms of behaviour when it comes to being baptised in the Holy Spirit. And unfortunately, one of those has been to almost look down on others who don't have this, this mm -hmm. experience. Now, now, I won't go into all that now, but I've had many physical experiences of the presence of the Holy Spirit, some very, very dramatic. And, mm. and, and there is that tendency to think, well, I've got something and, and, and so you, you haven't. But um, cer certainly um, my, my own church, not to criticise it, but, it, but it, it was over the years, many years, you know, we, we, we have something here and, and, and it's always, they always sort of been very, we work, we work on our own and we don't interact with, with the other churches because mm -hmm. they've got missing something. They haven't quite got it right. And mm -hmm. there was something that nagged at me on all of that. And, and, um, and anyway, particularly, as I say, since I um, le left my police career and, and God has taken me on a, a, a very interesting journey, I've, I've really felt he said, uh, when I started the prayer movement in the city, he said, mm -hmm. I said to the Lord, what's this based on really? And he said, it's about unity and it's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about putting aside the things that divide mm. and concentrating on what is the main deal. And the main deal just, is Jesus. Just say those words again, would you? Those two words you just used. Unity. Unity. Let's, let's, and just, love. let's just hold those two words for a moment. It's all about unity. And it's all about love. I mean, they, yeah. they, they, they do seem to me to be words that Jesus, <laughs> Jesus talked about quite a lot. Unity and love. And so let me ask you a really direct question, and I've not prepared you for this, I know that, but as, as you, you know, from a church, which as you say, where you can feel because you've had deep encounters with God, you could sometimes feel like, you know, we're the church that's got it you know, right in a way, and you've, you've explained that, so we understand you don't feel that way. But I, I, hope, you can, I hope you get what I mean by this question. As, you, as you've begun over the last few years in a deep way to, to seek unity and love with other Christians in other churches or other, I always prefer to say other parts of God's church, because I, I think there's only one church that Jesus is building. Yeah. I mean, how, how easy have you found it to love people from different church backgrounds? Or do you actually find it really hard to love them when you actually, you know, when it comes to the re reality of meeting them, spending time with them, praying with them, doing things together. Is it easy to love them and be united or is that really difficult? Actually, I, I've, I've found it really easy. Um, I think the problem is with, with churches that uh, just as I wear glasses, which have yeah. got particular lenses in, yeah. um, people who are in particular churches and streams and what have you uh, 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 see their faith through particular lenses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think... Um, I, as I say, I don't want to um, speak uh, ill of, of, of people at the church that I go to at all. But I, again, over the years, I've seen people who have been, you know, they've got very thick lenses and they're not prepared to, yeah. you know, look to the side. And, and, and they've a actually, I, I found people who um, are around all traditions. And let's give, let's give us, let's try to give a specific example. Yeah, so good, yeah. being baptised in the Holy Spirit. I actually, in the church that I go to, there's probably are people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, but they hide it quite well. <laughs> and, in, you know, it's, it's not as swinging from the chandeliers or, or bit that sort of wild um, mm. expression of, of, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, as perhaps some would, would think. Mm. And uh, yes, I've, I've interacted much with, with people, even... Um, you know, Church of England vicars and, 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 and leaders of more traditional denominations mm. around our city in recent years, and, and know a number of them who are, are so beautifully filled with the presence of God. And mm. Mm. Um, if, if you like, I've, I've heard them express it by speaking in tongues. Uh, and there's, there's not one bit of them that is, is sort of what you might consider Pentecostal, yeah. Yeah. and yet they're, they're, they're exuding something of that. Mm. Um, it's not just unity, actually. I, I just I love this expression, which is in um, in John seventeen about being as one. Yeah, yeah. We're as one with, with with God, as one with the Father, one with Jesus the Son, and one with each other. Hmm. 
and it honestly doesn't matter what denomination or tradition you come from if you have that that oneness and, I, and you are prepared to, to lay all these things that, that might tend to divide aside and concentrate on the main deal which ultimately is Jesus and indeed his mission mm. to spread the good news uh, out no, I love that world. thanks David I love it and I think that just to bring up those two words again for a moment to get really get them into our minds unity and love and as you say in john 17 jesus really prayed to the father very specifically yeah. about that unity okay let, let's move on just got a couple few minutes left just want to um really tie this down a little bit now and 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 kind of get, ask you to be really honest about what these things feel like when you do them because you mentioned just a, a while ago like praying on the streets and you know really just going i guess well you tell me but encountering people in public places and praying that god would heal them and whatever whatever so some some people listening to this might hear that and think praise god that's exactly what i do and I, you know i'm all for that other people might hear you say that and just the first feeling they have is utter you know fear literally petrification fear you know being petrified means being turned to stone so you get so afraid that you can't even move so i'm guessing people watching this could could have those two extremes or somewhere in the middle um, but here you are you seem like a pretty you know ordinary guy you know obviously capable of speaking and sharing and living and all that stuff but but how do you find the courage if it is courage you find or whatever it is you need to find how do you get that to actually go out onto the streets in public highways where people are and pray if this is what you do, pray that God will heal them or, or whatever. I mean, what does that feel like when it happens? Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. I often have, have said, um, as an ex-police officer, I, I perhaps haven't got a lot of compassion about me. You know, I've got a hard <laughs> edge. And okay. I said to the Lord once about this, and he said, actually, it's not your compassion, it's mine. It's mm. the, that that the Holy Spirit gives us. And, um, you know, you think of the early disciples, hard edged fishermen and, and, and what have you. Now, they, I don't know what, what their lives were like personally, but I, I guess, you know, they warmed to, to, to Jesus and his mm. compassion and, and acted out of what they saw him do. So I suppose, you know, reading all the stuff in the Bible about the miracles of Jesus and all those things, mm. I thought, wow you know, is, is, is this not possible today? And I, for years I, would, I was in my church and, and didn't see a lot to be honest. Mm -hmm. And then actually, um, I met a man, um, in fact, during my police days, who had a healing ministry in, in the city and actually ran a thing called Healing Rooms, mm -hmm. um, which I won't go into all the details, but a bit like a doctor's surgery where you, you go in and the doctor is Dr. Jesus. Okay. And, and Christians were there who would pray for people. And I started mm -hmm. to see some real miracles. For instance, I saw a man's um, leg lengthen, mm -hmm. about an inch shorter, one was shorter than the other. And uh, we, we prayed and he felt that, that the joint move and, and it pulled out and he had a back problem and, and that sort of seemed to ease. And, and I started... Do? What, what did he do? Sorry. Mm. So when that happened, because we, you know, we hear these stories and they're great. Yeah. So you said the man's leg literally grew and then his body realigned to... What did he do? I mean, did he jump up in the air and start dancing? Did, what, um, how, how did he respond to that when it happened to him? Well, actually, uh, he, he responded to it fairly, uh, you know, in, in a sort of fairly matter of fact way. Oh, and I think okay. we, we do see that in, in the Bible that the people yeah. would sort of, oh, I'm healed, you know, thank you. Yeah. Um, seen that about 20 times now, and people have had different reactions. Mm. Um, but it, it, it's, yeah, it's actually more interesting. The buzz it creates, with, if, if, particularly if you're in a more public setting or in a meeting yeah. or something, and what, what, what it creates among the faith it, it creates with other people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've seen that. You were in these healing rooms. And then so now, as you said, you've actually been out. You said prayer on the streets you talked about. Yeah. Right? Is that literally going out on the street and meeting strangers and praying for them? What happens when you're praying on the streets? What do you do? Yeah, so I suppose it's one thing doing it in a church building, which is what the healing rooms was about, and mm. people would come to us. But then I got approached by a particular church who I had a, a good relationship with and said, would you like to become involved with a thing called Healing on the Streets? Right. So um, there, there is a, an organisation called Healing on the Streets, which started in, in Northern Ireland, which mm. is uh, um, part of the, the British Isles. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, I, I did some training and, and, and joined a number of others. I became the co-leader of this group. And basically every month we would go out into our local market square. Uh, we would put up a, a, a vertical banner, which was 15 foot high, which had simply had the word healing on it. We'd hand oh. out some leaflets that invited people to come and sit on one of four um, wooden uh, garden chairs that we put out in a row. We would kneel before them and we would pray for um, God to come and presence himself with them. And we saw all sorts of uh, amazing things that perhaps one of the, the most that, that sticks out in my mind was a man who, who, who wheeled himself up in a wheelchair, sort of self-propelled himself up mm. and he, he went off walking, pushing it. He, he wasn't Shoot. totally lame, I'll say, but he, yeah. he had no strength to, to walk and, he, and, he, and he, he felt the presence of God come on him. Wow. Um, quite you know, we didn't do anything other than just sort of said lord come and the presence of yeah. god came and this man walked off you know he, he, again he didn't yeah. leap off you know yeah. jumping but he was very grateful he wasn't walking and leaping and praising god well he was certainly great it's interesting you uh, you said something that there's so many things going on in my mind right now but one yeah. thing you said was that you didn't do anything god did i think that's such an important absolutely you know part of of this i know sometimes we attach you know, we talk about people with healing ministries and we can and we can attach the power of the healing to the person with the ministry rather yes. than recognizing it's god that does it but i'm just trying to get a, to see so you've got these four wooden chairs that people come and sit in and, and this person obviously didn't sit in a wooden chair he already had his own chair and he, he up in it and then pushed it away what, what while you're praying for these people that are sitting in the chairs i mean what's happening in the town or are, the, are there people watching what goes on and do you get like a crowd around watching to see if it works or and how do you feel if that's happening do you feel pressure that if it doesn't work you're going to feel like you fell how do you feel and what's going on in while you're praying for these people well you know by this time i'd seen so many um what, what i would call miracles yeah. and, and healings that, that that it was it wasn't even a question that we wouldn't see stuff and stuff wouldn't happen wow. now obviously you don't see things happen every time yeah um i think that's that, that's a given not not physically but yeah. what, what we used to do as i say was just <coughs> excuse me we just used to ask for the presence of god to to, to come down the presence of the holy spirit we wouldn't, we wouldn't say holy spirit because you know we didn't want to you know confuse people with with yeah. language but we just say you know presence of god come and we would let god do what he wanted to do so it took a lot of pressure off myself and the other people who got involved and, and everyone else involved with this were only ordinary christians there were no mm. ministers or or church mm. leaders or anything in fact we, you know it's a shame we didn't see any church leaders they might have but got a few ideas um <laughs> but the, but you know there were people all around and, and yeah people would would you could see them sitting on benches because there were public benches and things nearby and just watching and then maybe we we would discern that one of those people would then approach us or we would go up and approach people yeah, and we would exactly. draw people in as it were so i see i was going to ask you that you answered it i think that so as you know some would come in a sense to 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 sit in the seats to be prayed for but i was thinking there would be it's always the same in the crowds isn't there there's always those people that kind of hang back a little bit they oh yeah and yet as you say what you would do with some of those is you'd actually go and I guess just talk to them. What, 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 so if I was standing in that crowd, if I, if I was like, you know, I don't know, 30 feet away, standing outside a shop, leaning against the wall, feeling a little, feeling that made me a, a bit more secure <laughs> so I wasn't going to get jumped on, and you walked up to me, um, what would you, what, how, how would you have approached me if you saw that I was looking but wasn't actually there? What, what would you say to me as, as if you came up and approached me? Okay. I think to say, first of all, that we would have, we'd be very careful when we approach people. There was no yeah. hard sell. Um, yeah. we, we, we did, when we approach people, we, we, what, we, what I like to say is we put our, our, our spiritual, spiritual antenna up yeah. and we would watch for those people that God wanted us to go and speak to. Uh, yeah. and, and that's a difficult balance. But yeah. we, we would look for those who, who you know, were, were just expressing interest or, or maybe we would just approach people who are walking past. But, yeah. but God would lead us to people and we would basically have a leaflet saying we're just, you know, we're okay. praying for yeah. people who have got healing needs this morning. Is there anything we can pray for you for? And that okay. would probably either lead to them walking off or, mm. or perhaps with the leaflet or not. Or it might lead to a conversation. Mm. And, and quite often it would then all of a sudden it would lead to this person consenting to walk with us to these these chairs in a very public way. 
mm. and, and sitting down and, and have, having these guys and, and girls you know kneeling down yeah. and either laying hands yeah, gently just, on them yeah. or not that's just great i mean as, as you I'm, I'm i don't know if anybody else is but as i'm listening to you i'm seeing it as you're saying it you know what what i'm i'm seeing is for some people that 20 feet 10 feet walk whatever from you approaching them giving them a leaflet to going to sit in one of those seats with anybody it just it, i mean it just seems like a a big thing to do but it works and you know and no <laughs> surprise yeah surprising how easy so david we're gonna to have to finish in a moment because our time is pretty much sure. up and uh, I, I love what we've talked about i love the way that you talk about joining jesus mission which is what this, these programs are all about, for you seems to be quite naturally um, inf infused, if that's the right word, with a recognition that the, a supernatural God can do extraordinary things through pretty ordinary people. That's, that's what yes. I'm hearing you talk about. So let me just, let me just ask you, I'm going to do this with everybody I meet on these, these different programs as we, as we go along. Uh, just to finish, and this is a bit of a challenge, but just give it your best shot. <laughs> I'd like you to just in a very few words now, if I was somebody watching this or listening to this and thinking, no, I, I do actually believe that God could use me. I could join Jesus' mission by stepping out into the kind of things that David has shared today. And there's so much more you could say. We know that. But what would you say to anybody listening to this who's thinking, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do this but how do i start what do i do now what would you say to me if i was asking that question i think i'd first of all say that that just relax because this isn't you you, you know it's not your power your might as it says in in the bible it's, it's by the power of the holy spirit that, that already lives and, and dwells within you so there's not there's no pressure for you to do anything except that you know jesus did say go out and make disciples and you know part of that and, and again it takes pressure off because it's not we didn't preach we never preached to people out on the street mm. you know, we mm. talk about jesus and our, our own experiences and i think that's the thing just mm. know that you uh, uh, no matter how new or, or, or a christian you are or, or maybe whatever your experiences are you've got a story you can tell people mm. just be natural about it and uh you know pe people will respond to, to hearing a you know, you know a personal story uh, rather than a, a hard sell of some biblical thing that you might have learned or heard from someone else thanks david i really appreciate it and i'd just like to echo as we close out this time what david just shared there that sometimes we can think that joining jesus mission means we have to be part of some really heavily organized um outreach where we learn every word and then go deliver it uh but it sounds like what david's saying to us and what i really want to underline is that joining jesus mission doesn't mean we have to do that often it means being just who we are and letting the reality of who god really is shine through us and then expect god to do the things that we can't do as, as david shared we can't heal anybody <laughs> but god can and in his grace and goodness, he often does it through us and uses us in ways that only he can do. So be encouraged by that as you seek um, in your town. It may not be Chelmsford. It may be completely different from Chelmsford. But God is still God and people still need him. So in your town where you are, just take that step forward in the way that God is, ask, is asking you and join him in his mission. Thanks so much. God bless you. See you next time. Mm -hmm.